Hello and welcome to the first edition of GTV 16 News. This is a show that's been co-produced with the efforts of high school students as reporters and, of course, Gosstown TV. I'm GTV coordinator Adam McCune, and before we begin this presentation and this news show, I do want to make one word of effort to you. We're hoping for some help. We need somebody to do this job, the anchor. We're looking for somebody in the public that can help us out. They could be the producer and the anchor of this show. It could be one person, it could be a team. We just need some new people in here to try and do this. So if you're interested in doing something like the news, being the anchor or producing the news, contact us with the information you see on your screen. And right now, the news. Big changes are coming to Goffstown and one major landmark that rests between Pinardville and the village. Since 1989, women prisoners have been serving time in the New Hampshire State Prison for Women. Starting in 2014, prisoners will eventually be transported to a new Concord location next to the Men's State Prison. The New Hampshire State Prison for Women in Goffstown will be moving from Goffstown to Concord uh, over the next uh, two and a half or so years. Uh, this building is very old, it's, it's very outdated, it, um, it, it's too small to meet the needs of our female offender population. We don't have enough programming space available to us and we really need to provide them with the services and treatment that they need uh, to help them be properly rehabilitated. The Gosstown Prison will be officially shut down by 2016. In 2014, plans and blueprints will begin to be drawn up. Then in 2015, construction should begin in Concord. The transportation process will be no easy feat. However, the Department of Corrections has a plan. But what we'll do is we'll either use our own transportation vehicles, uh, transfer them in groups of five to ten or so at a time, or if need be, we can uh, uh, get other vehicles, larger buses of some sort, rent them and do transportations. So that it'll be done gradually over the course of a, a period of time once the new facility is open. Now Gostown waits to see what this location will become. Caleb Pietzu, GTV 16 News. While the changes aren't going to happen soon, there are no plans for what happens to that property after the women's prison moves out. There's a major event here at the high school for the Red Cross and it was a huge success. On November 20th, 2013, members of the Goffstown community lost hundreds of pints of blood for charity. At the Red Cross Blood Drive, donors gave up class and work time to give their blood and make a difference. Uh, what's going on, Goffstown? My name's Austin. I'm a senior at Goffstown High School. Right now, I'm waiting in line to donate some blood here to help some people out, you know, make a difference in my community, and you all should too. The GHS National Honor Society organized the drive, which turned out to be the most successful fall drive in school history. So this year, we weren't able to actually get the main gym, which is where we usually do it, but we, um, we made do and we're sort of setting it up in half the gym because the gym is being refloored. And so we have like the senior calf and like we're sort of like spread out like we have a registration in the senior calf and like the people working and the people giving main blood in like half of the gym. So it was like a little bit chaotic this year but we were able to pull it off and it's working like better than ever I think. According to the Red Cross, somebody in the United States needs blood every two seconds. More than 41,000 blood donations are needed every day. I want to give blood today because I have a really rare blood and I want to help people and I'm really nervous. <laughs> These enthusiastic Goffstown donors have certainly done their part. This is Tim Andrews, GTV 16 News. For more information about local donations, contact the Red Cross. If you've missed a meeting here on GTV on Channel 22, no worries, you can catch them on demand. Just go to the town website and you can actually catch any of the meetings that we've had. They're available within 24 hours of the end of the meeting. Plus, you can watch any of the live meetings that are going on on the channel. And that's for anybody who's in town, anybody who really wants to. You don't have to be a Comcast subscriber. Just go to Goffstown.com and click on the GTV logo. Annual pie auction was held for the Friends of the Goffstown Library, and it was a night to remember. An army of pies invaded Villa Agustina last Saturday. Pie makers, from professionals to kids, showed up to showcase their pie making talent. Later, the award winning pies were auctioned off as part of the Once Upon a Pie fundraiser. Spinach quiche, yummy. Look at that. These are great. 
Don't get too close to it. Can you take checks? The Friends of Gosstown Public Library planned and staffed the event. Most of our fundraising activities go to support our Museum Pass program at the Gosstown Public Library. Um, we've also used some of our um, proceeds from our fundraising to purchase a um, popcorn machine for the library for their um, movie nights. And other th items, um, the library provides a welcome um, package for new residents. We um, supply the materials that go into those welcome packages. So we have several different programs that we do um, utilize our fundraising um, proceeds for. Many pie lovers filled up the area for the feast and award presentation. And the chocolate category for first place, the No Bake Snickers Pie by Jessica Sheehan. Come on, Jessica, and cross over to the other side. Congratulations, winner. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. For GTV 16 News, I'm Brian Torres. Gosstown TV has started out our hockey season, and there's a familiar voice that you may recognize. Al Potvin is once again doing the games. As you recall, he did all of our football games here on GTV. You can check out the schedule, and we post uh, some of those games on YouTube as well, right on our Facebook page for Gosstown Grizzlies Hockey. And we'll be having more games coming up for the basketball season for both boys and girls. For weeks, a mysterious tarp covered something at the traffic circle in Grasmere. And now, we have a new landmark. On April 20th, 1776, a group of men gathered in what was then known as Goffstown Center. They spoke of revolution, as many had at the time. But this was different. This was the day after the historic first shots of the rebellion, just to the south in Lexington and Concord, Massachusetts. It was here the men decided to join the militia under a regiment that was later famously led by General John Stark. The spot the men mustered, near the traffic circle in what is now known as Grasmere, has been a hidden historic site for years. Recently, the town honored the ground with the unveiling of a new statue at what is now known as Muster Rock. This whole project has been a labor of love for the Historic District Commission of Gosstown, and we're especially proud to be able to dignify, in a little bit better manner, this beautiful little historic village of Grasmere. A large crowd took in the unveiling of the statue that was funded through efforts from the co-chairs of the Gosstown 250th Anniversary Committee. Letters from Senator Kelly Gayot, Representative Carol Shea Porter, as well as Governor Hassan were read. The event concluded with the firing of the Molly Stark cannon. I'm Adam McCune, GTV 16 News. For more information about Muster Rock or other historical markers in Gosstown, contact the Historical Society. And that will do it for GTV 16 News. Thanks for joining us. Once again, we're looking for your help. Do you want to be the anchor? Do you want to produce the news here at GTV? Well, just simply contact us and you could be the person right here in this seat. Good night and good luck.